I begin with vitriol. I, uh, those of you who know me know the, for the last couple of years since I moved back to town, I've been trying to get by being a, a free, doing freelance writing, probably one of the dumbest times in history to try to start a freelance business. And I'm glad to say that for, for a couple of months now, I've actually been getting steady work. Maybe the economy is springing back. Maybe. So that's kind of cool. It doesn't make me feel any better about the uh, damage that the, the crazy, greedy people did to the economy and uh, whatever exactly happened. Uh, and, uh, you know, corporations, we have corporations now. Uh, and uh, we didn't used to have them. And some of them are good. I get, well, some of them give me a lot of work. And, um, so, but when they're bad, they're monsters. In some ways, uh, the corporation is the Frankenstein monster that we created in the 19th century. Uh, and not, not made any better by the fact that, you know, they're legally part of the legal definition. I'm sure you guys know this is that corporations are potentially immortal uh, entities. So I want to start, get this off my chest with a little curse poem, uh, if I may, um, called, O Corporation, You Are Not Immortal. Oh, plug the merry plug, you tedious face of death, you impossible freak. Plug the silky siren in and shunt the silence of its saccharine song into the linty bureau of your splintering, wrapped, rapacious heart. Oh, eat the plucky mare, the tedious mace, the mass of death. Oh, eat and eat the sabine heat, the chattering flock, the ambitious dull. Oh, eat and plug and stuff the flinty sorrow of the captive mind into the rancid love. Love boat of your hacking want, your flatulent eye. Oh, eat and plug and stuff and hack, hack away, hewing freak, hawing cancer, hiving horse, howling mentor, cannibal drunk, hypnotist of the muling spree, chimera, canker, soft dis-ease, hackneyed genius of a volute sense, tyrannic enzyme, flawed macaw, sanctum, slaughterhouse, verdant scree, mother of knee hill, father of a twist tongue, myopic utopia, dementia unbound. Eat it all up, yes, like a good bunny. Chow down, fucker, stuff it down, stuff it all the way, plug it in, clamp down, and gloat. Har the hearty har, like a champing Jesus, gloat. Plug all the stops, plug every pore. Leak not, oh corporation, and bloat, bloat huge, bloat bellful, bloat bilous, bloat immobile, and freeze black heart from the bunions up, freeze a royal babble stew, freeze a sphincterous clench, freeze basaltic, freeze stench to dust, freeze breath, freeze face, freeze nerves, freeze in mid-gaw, freeze the minions of your tantric tongue to autonomic blades, freeze that tantalizing rictus of your cawing maw, and hack, hack above all, hack blood to boil, joints to rust, hack egregious rhetoric to pandering excuse, hack the corpses from your safe, hack the vital organs loose, hack vision to a dwindling speck, hack all your being to a a desiccating sty and die and die and die. Don't, don't, don't you just feel like that some days? Okay. Thank you for letting me get that off my chest. I just really needed to spew it. The thing is, you know, uh, we, we have corporations now, and they share the planet with us, and in some ways we need to learn to live with them at least for a while. I don't know if they'll be around forever. Who's looked a thousand years into the future? Who wants to? And, uh, uh, but but in, some, in some ways I think we, we could really use to regain our culture, uh, you know, to sort of claim back some individual culture. There are a lot of things that we could do, but, you know, over corporate culture. Uh, <laughs> And so just one suggestion, <clears throat> an old suggestion, just one of many. I'm sure you have many thoughts yourself, but I'll just suggest the old maxim, do it yourself. You've heard this. Check this out. Here's, here's a leaf. Take a piece of your mind and put it on a plate. Here's a hammer. Take a piece of your mind and slam it on the table. Here's a brick. 
take a piece of your mind and let me hear it. Let me hear it. Let me take it home and coddle it and fight with it and make it a good meal. Let me smell it and touch it and find the parts I know. Here's the sky. Here's a knot. Here's a cinch. Take a piece of your mind and slap me. Throw, throw it in the street. Let it run loose. Let it scream a bit. Take a piece of you and I'm telling you, you're going to live. You're going to die. What's it worth? Put your hand on the block and strike. God damn it. What do you want? You want to live? Here's a fly. Here's a plane. Here are two pieces of wood, a basket, a shotgun, a piece of fruit. Here's the law. Take your fucking mind and charge it. Slam it. Sear it through. Fling it at the world. Uh, uh, what culture? What celebration? Gluttonous dogs, renders of meat, capsules. Here's my hand. Take your mind and do what you want with it. What do you want to do? Chant on, multiply, strike the dogs down, uh, eat sand, recant, uh, defend your property, ex extend your hand, stab me quickly, um, kick back and live it, live it up, live it all the way, fuck it, spew, cover the land in mounds of fat, rank spores, morbid scree, capsules, polyps, is that what you are? Here's your mind. Take it. it. It's yours. It's all yours. What is yours? What chunk is yours? Is this your life? Fling it. Strike the dogs. It's all yours. For how long? What do you want? Here's a leaf. God damn it, a leaf. Here's culture. Once a celebration, once tidings, once gratitude and grace. Here's a hammer. Just a... We soldier on, uh, and sometimes we do what we can, and sometimes, well, at least I can say, uh, I just have to keep myself sane. Um, I think maybe we all go through that. And um, one of the things that I think about is something that I actually saw oh, year, like 20 years ago. Uh, and when I'm having a hard time, I still think of it. And I thought I'd just let you know that as a sort of finish for my ramble tonight. Um, and that was uh, the very first time, actually, that I ever worked in a corporation. I went to visit some friends in Chicago and ended up staying the summer and did temp work to get along. And, uh, and it was a challenge for, like, a little punk rock kid, uh, you know, just sort of dealing with the environment. And, you know, I, 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 I'm not sure I would have made it through an, an infernal summer of temp work in Chicago without some form of therapy. And I found an, an odd one at that. It was through this, uh, this therapy that, that I, I became sole witness to uh, a, a truly strange and truly beautiful phenomenon that I still think back to this day. Witness. This is a glimpse of the cogs, pure physics in brilliance. I, I See, I dragged myself home from the trenches five days weekly, um, mashed in the broiling L with gobs of nervous yuppies, trapped for God knows how long without their climate control, fainting and having heart attacks right and left. Uh, and I'd go up to Dave and Lisa's place where I was staying, strip off the sticky monkey skin and, um, and wander near naked out to their really pleasant little second floor balcony where I'd usually... For about an hour, I'd usually sit there blowing bubbles. It was a nice neighborhoody intersection, the balcony overlooked, near Lincoln and Belmont, if anybody knows Chicago. And, uh, which, and I inflicted it almost every afternoon for months with clouds of annoying little opalescent soap bubbles uh, to the distraction of many, the short pleasure of few, and the irritation of several in particular. No. You have to admit, they are delightful things, those cute little bubbles. I'm a bit of a loss to explain the extent of my delight at that time, but I, I could, you know, sit, bask in the late afternoon heat and hyperventilate a lot and watch my little creations drift off into traffic. Here's what happened. One afternoon in July, 
The rockinest storm system of the summer blew through town. If you know Chicago storms, you know what I'm talking about. Driving rain for hours, branches blowing off trees, trees blowing over, uh, uh, floods amok, earthquake thunder, wild lightning everywhere, all over the sky every few seconds at some points, blowing power lines, smashing chimneys, sirens, sudden bolts, rain, 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 you know, the loud rain. I stood watching the whole thing from the porch, pure storm glory. About an hour into it, the wind had died down, and uh, the rain, thick as rice, is blotting out the street. You could barely see across the street. And I figured <laughs> I might just blow some bubbles. I was curious, actually, to see how far they'd make it into the grind, water pouring down like sand. I figured maybe an inch, their average diameter. So. I blew a, a big blast, a school of about 40 bubbles, out into the rain. Yes, heavy as buckshot. And watched them drift off into it, calm as can be in barely a breeze, absolutely undisturbed. Even their formation undisturbed, not even descending, disappearing into that wall of rain one of the heaviest rains I've ever seen, as if it were not there at all. True story. So I say, be as bubbles in the rain, good anarchists. The world is no one's. And I end with grace.